that we are at a point where we are safe. We have dealt with the major issues in the garden. I need to go fix some problems that were already out there before Hurricane Ian came to Florida, which is I had some spaces in this native garden that, well, we lost some of the plants before the hurricane. We lost a little bit during the hurricane, not so much, but we've got a lot of is plants that are just, does it look like anything's happening? Does it look like everything's falling over and leaning? Because that would be accurate. So what I need to do is start staking stuff back up um, and then identifying where we have some holes that I need to go fill back in. So that, that's what we're going to do today. And then we're going to go run to the store and go buy some plants and then put them in. And one of my outstanding errands that we talked about it was we did hurricane prep is I have so many black pots, like those black plastic pots that like stuff comes in. I have so many. And like, while you should always keep some because like when you have little projects here and there, you just want to reuse pots and not buy new pots. Um, I have too many. I have accumulated for what, five, seven years worth of pots. So let's reuse, reduce, recycle. You know, I'm just gonna take them back to Wilcox and like they can have them because I'm not using them and they're really just in my way most of the time. So let's get going on staking some of the plants and talking through some of the holes specifically that I wanna try to fill. So there's a couple different types of stakes that I have. I'm not saying these are the best. I'm just saying that's what I have. We've accumulated these over the years from places like Home Depot and Lowe's. Um, and they work fine. I use them for vegetable stuff and native stuff and whatever. Um, I have found the most useless to be these type, though at times they are helpful with little plants. And they're actually going to be really helpful, I feel like, with a lot of these wildflowers. But anything like, I think they were sold as tomato steaks. Nah, the weight is too much. Um, and most plants I find like these just end up bending over. But I think things like our vanilla plant and some of our blazing stars, these will be really good because they don't have a lot of weight. They're just, they don't have a lot of weight. They don't have a lot of structure to them. So I think like these would be really nice to just help propping back up. And I've got a whole bunch of them. I was holding off because of the wind post Hurricane Ian because we the wind was like, it was great for doing heavy duty work, but it was not great for taking up tiny plants. I have a lot. <laughs> I don't remember why I ended up, I think they, did they come in packs back then? I don't know. The other came in packs and I was a new gardener and I thought these would be good for vegetable gardening. Not. That is not the case. Everybody's leaning. Everyone's got a significant lean. So I think everyone just needs, actually, you know who doesn't have a big lean? Joe Pieweed. Joe Pieweed is just like, yeah, I'm cool. I'm just going to hang out right here. This one did great. I'm surprised. It was one of the taller plants and I would have expected it to have a lean and no lean. Good job. I'm trying to be careful of like these are really twisted and laying down. And so if I yank this back up one, it's, so <laughs> it's already trying to self-correct itself anyways. So I really don't want to try to yank on this one too much so I'm gonna probably leave this part down but I got this part up so hopefully it continues to like upward grow and we'll kind of leave this part down here one of the challenges is that these things are not very strong I think I said that but they bend over time so if you already have a plant that bent them when you try to put them in the ground they just want to bend again and that's that does nobody good so let's go try to do our next are elegant or are graceful? I don't remember which one's which. One of them's elegant, one of them's graceful. But let's get this one up. What I'm doing is I'm trying to put these right at the base where I want the plant to be. And then I bring it up to it at the base here. Going all the way through and down and see how far I can get it now. And the closer I can be towards the base, the better. So I'll try to come through here. I'll be very gentle, as gentle as I can be, about weaving these plants through. Because some of these stakes are going to end up needing to stay here until we're done with the plant. That's okay. But now we are more upright. Ah, you guys are tangled. Now some plants like this uh, Levensworth seed. I'm not going to worry about it leaning because it's very natural for it to go up and then out and then up and then out. That's kind of its growth pattern versus the starry rosenweed, which is supposed to kind of go up. And now I'm going to twist this to kind of pull it a little bit more this way. 
So now we're just a little bit, a little bit straighter. Pretty straight. It doesn't look straight for you because you're at an angle, but come here. Now much more upright, right? That looks a lot better. I think that looks a lot better. So now you can see we've got our Joe Pye weed, but there's the starry rosen weed. Here's another starry rosen weed. And then there is that Leatris. I still have that branch on the ground, but they are way more upright, way more ready to like fill in the space. Okay, so next up, let's try to do this blazing star Leatris. You know what? I wonder if those would be better for like a tomato twist, but the tomato twists are so big and they're so contrasting, which I like in the vegetable garden because they're like blue and yellow and they kind of show up nicely. Um, but I feel like they just draw attention. I don't know. We'll see how many stakes I can make work out of here because I still got blazing. I don't know what I'm going to try to do with that rattlesnake master. It already had a little bit of a lean anyways before the storm and now it has a lean. And and here's one of the things. Let me show you what it's doing. And this isn't uncommon with plants. Rattlesnake is like a really good example of like when you may consider not staking. And it's so when you have like your your rose and weed like right here, you see it singular stock going up or your Joe Pye weed, right? You know, you want to stake those back up because if it's just on the ground, like this blazing star, I mean, you're just not really getting the look. But when you have something like the Coreopsis back there or this marsh rattlesnake, these are ones where I consider like, do I need to really stake them? Because you see like, yes, a lot of the growth here and this is all leaning towards me, but it actually opens up space. So as it puts on new growth, often, not all plants, but often, this will start to fill in over here. And you'll see similar that Coreopsis was very much leaning and now new growth is starting to actually come straight up out of it. So if you see in the middle of this plant, while it did have a lean and this one has a lean, if you look down in it, there's new growth coming up in the middle. So the falling actually kind of opens up space for new growth to get light versus if all this stood up, that could not come in. So it's kind of a difference that I see. But like I said, I'm not an expert on staking. This is just how my brain works. Take it for what it's worth. I'm trying to get that stock. So the plants that we lost uh, prior to the hurricane or because of the hurricane, who's to say? Except for the fact that I did a one month update and I kind of told you guys. Um, but we lost a scrub mint right here and we lost two rain lilies and we've lost a palafox and um, we lost a cardinal flower because I stepped backwards onto it when I was installing all the plants. So stuff happens. What are you going to do? So what we're going to definitely go get at Wilcox, to, one, we're going to drop off all of those pots at Wilcox. Two, we're going to get another uh, yellow silk grass because it looks so cute. And we had said once we installed all this, we were like, oh, there's an empty space. We definitely need to add one of those. We'll get another scrub mint. Um, I'm not going to replace the palafox. I'm not going to replace the cardinal flower because I have to go to the little red wagon to do that. And I don't want to drive all the way out there. And um, just committing to those two plants. But I'm not committing that I won't buy anything else while I'm there. Okay. So we'll get going. <laughs> Oh my gosh, there's more pots. Dang it. I mean, have I bought a lot of plants over time? Maybe. 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 Who's to say? So we've emptied out my car. <laughs> now we have space on the cart for new things. And there's so many new things here, right? Like, they've got the button rattle snake master. Of course, they got more of the Everglades square stem. There's some really pretty blazing stars over here. I've been eyeing this common Florida violet. 
Okay, but let's focus. Let's get the things that we definitely said we were gonna come for, which was the um, silk grass and rub mint. Oh my gosh, there's some blue sage. This stuff is looking really pretty right now. And Stokes Aster looking gorgeous. Oh, oh there's more of the vanilla plant. Oh, I like that. So I found my scrub mints. Aren't they looking pretty? Oh my gosh. Actually, that's oh, sorry, scrub mint, calamanthus. But both are looking really pretty right now. Really pretty. Kind of cool. Um, so hammock twin flower. I actually used this as a ground cover in one of the projects I did. I don't remember which one, but I put it in too shady of a location. Um, but what's cool, because there's more interest in native ground covers is they're now starting to sell them in like these 18 block trays so like you would buy this whole tray I don't know if you see, this whole tray which would give you 18 blocks so i don't know there's like a little sign right there for it um but i think that's cool because a lot of people are starting to get more and more interested i know a couple of y'all said that you like came to wilcox and you've come to some of the places i've recommended and you've been asking for things like frog fruit and sunshine mimosa so the fact that they're starting to provide like whole trays so that you can just like do a lot of fun things with it. I think that's pretty cool. I might need those in the near future because my backyard's looking pretty sad right now and um, I don't really want to spend money on grass. So maybe I'll we'll try some twin flowers or something crazy like that. Looks like they are all out of silk grass. So that's a bummer. <laughs> we have more rain lilies. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm going to grab more. And we can replace the two we lost. Hooray! Hmm. That's cute too. That's exciting. I didn't think they'd have any more rain lily, so that's cool. And they're on sale. We'll take it. For those of y'all who watch that are local, um, there is a huge amount of milkweed. <laughs> well, God, way more than I've seen in my entire time of ever coming here. They've got butterfly weed, they got a huge amount of swamp milkweed. Um, I saw a twine vine. They got a lot of milkweed. So if you're looking for milkweed, Wilcox, <laughs> they've got a lot right now. So Adam was just convincing me that I need to go and do, instead of another cardinal flower, which they don't have any right now, but we're gonna instead do a really fun one that's gonna be a similar shape, which is paintbrush plant. Did I get that right? He's gonna give me a tag. I'll confirm later and I'll put the name down below. So we got something to backfill that cardinal flower I lost. I've got a couple rain lilies. And then I impulse grab this celestial lily. I don't know where I'm put it, but I want it and I'm gonna put it somewhere. Confirm there's no more silk grass. Um, a lot of the suppliers got hit really bad by Ian. So that's gonna be kind of missing in action MIA for a little while. Um, but we'll fill it in whenever they get stuff back in. That's not a big deal. I keep looking at the blue sage. The blue sage looks so good. I really wanna buy more blue sage. <laughs> I shouldn't. Okay, we're finished. Now to head back and hopefully get home in time for this celestial lily to open up at four o'clock. We'll see if I can capture it today. If not, I'll capture it tomorrow and I'll just insert it here. Oh my gosh, I just came out just in time. Uh, the celestial lily, it has bloomed. Oh, look at this. So pretty. Oh my goodness. So what they were telling me at Wilcox is that it blooms every day at four o'clock in the afternoon. So um, I'm very excited that I was able to make it home in time <laughs> and get it on, on film. Cause, oh, look at that. That is, that is so pretty. I'm thinking I'll put this where the cardinal flower is. So let's go and start placing some plants. Okay, so we're officially filling in the holes. So we lost a scrub mint. So we'll put the other scrub mint in here. We'll fill in the two little spots for rain lilies. I don't know if you can see it, but there are actually rain lilies right here and here. 
they're there just trust me and then the paintbrush plant we'll put right here which i think will be really pretty um it's a little bit more forward into the sun um what i was being told was that they'll be very similar ish to the vanilla plant but wildlife likes it even more what do you think monarch maybe so we'll put it right there it'll get some kind of stockiness going and then some i think it's paler purple flowers oh wait there's a picture on here let's go look at it there we go florida paintbrush look at that oh it's more pinky that's really pretty florida paintbrush we'll put right here kind of behind where the cardinal flower was you can see it's actually putting on some new greenery i don't know that it's going to have a full-on stock to you know flower but we'll put it there but florida paintbrush what adam was telling me was that um craig hugel is a big fan of it what's up craig hugel if you don't know craig hugel he writes a lot of books on uh, doing Florida native plants in the garden and gardening with wildlife. So check him out. And yeah, we're going to try that one right there, right there. So if this comes back, cool. If it doesn't come back, that's fine. But we'll have this and it'll be pink. We have blues. We have a little bit of pink back there. And then I put a celestial flower, our celestial lily right there. Why? Because over here we already have like a lot of pinks going on and we kind of had this like little scrub thing happening which was very symmetrical but then it kind of moves on into other stuff and so I thought you know what let's add that really pretty blue purple color right here and I just think it'll be really fun to come out here at four o'clock every day and see see our new blooms they're so pretty I'm gonna start with my bigger plant the scrub mint first because I am definitely gonna step on a rain lily again and potentially squish it if I don't put it in first. So scrub mint, then we'll put in the rain lilies, then we'll put in the celestial lily. And then last but not least, that paintbrush plant. I just have to tell you, I've been, <laughs> I've been trying to get a shot of it, but the monarch is just like swinging around here and it really, really, really wants to go on the Joe Pye weed and it keeps coming in low and then off it goes. And why I want you to know that is, uh, just letting you know, monarchs like the Joe Pye weed. Everybody likes the vanilla plant, and everybody likes the Marsh Rattlesnake Master. They, they all seem to be really big fans of that one. So, just some things to add to your shopping list. I'm not saying, I'm just saying. So let's dig holes. Let's dig holes. <laughs> Stepped on one of the other ones that lived. No, live, rain lily, live. I was just clearing away everything, and good thing I looked and I went really slow because look at this. So the rain lily is not dead. Thank you. 
don't think. Okay, so now this is what's going on. Look, scrub mint, scrub mint looking so cute with our calamint, calamanthia right behind it. But one rain lily, there's actually a rain lily still alive right there. Rain lily, rain lily, and then now there's a rain lily here. And the rain lilies, and then these, the calaments and the scrub mint, should be in bloom around the same time, I think. So that might look really pretty, like late winter, early spring. So we got our cardinal flower and our blue sage is looking pretty. And then now the paintbrush coming across, going past our sky flower and then oh, celestial lily, which, where are you celestial lily? There you are, so beautiful. And then of course, we didn't add anything over there, but we did stake up a lot of plants and now they're up higher for our butterflies, like our vanilla plant and our Joe Pye wheat. Oh, butterfly, I swear, that monarch, any day now. Are you gonna get over there? Go get your Joe Pye weed. You keep flying close. Very indecisive, that monarch. And then just everything is looking a little bit better. It's all standing up. It's reaching for the sky. Yes, we are coming back bit by bit. So I hope this got you motivated and inspired to go back out there and do your minor corrections, fill in those holes, and start getting your garden back in order post Hurricane Ian. And if you want more ideas on some wonderful native plants that you could be adding to your garden, check out this video here. Or if you want to know what the one month update looked like before the hurricane, check out this video here. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye!